Greetings, all gallant sailors on YouTube. Welcome back to Abyssal Recap. Today we will pick up where we left off to finish the finale of the Bald and Bold Saga, aka Transporter 3. If you haven't watched the first two episodes yet, highly recommend to watch them first. Spoilers alert. Buckle up and take care. After the Miami Heat, Frank Martin, callsign the transporter has returned to France. He is now enjoying his retired life going on regular fishings with his old pal Turconi. Meanwhile, in East Europe, Leonid Tomalenko, the environmental agency minister who has been promoting environmental policies, receives a mysterious phone call. The caller claims to be commissioned to negotiate about trading permissions. The minister flatly refused. Because he could not permit any chemical pollutant discharge in exchange for profits. However, the caller kidnapped his daughter to have him reconsider signing the contract in 24 hours. Back to Frank, he was being a couch potato watching random TV show till a car suddenly bumped into his house. The crash shattered his drowsy night. He went on to check on the driver who was severely injured. After peeking his license, he noticed the driver was also a transporter. At this point, he could not help thinking about the job he rejected. A few days before, few folks came at him threatening for transportation. Frank kindly beat those retarded up and left. And now, this dying driver has taken his job. He requested him not to take him out of the car. But who was soon taken onto the ambulance. Frank also found a girl in the car. She informed Frank that they were attached with the explosive bracelet which could blow if they were far away from the vehicle. Hearing this, Frank rushed out to stop the ambulance but to see it explodes. As he's about to interrogate the girl for more details, he was knocked out. Frank woke up with the same bracelet he saw last night. When he suited up, the caller Jonas Johnson appeared. He threatened Frank to transport parcels for him. Without other options, Frank accepted. Johnson also brought Frank's car, but now it's geared with GPS and detonation device. If Frank tries anything suspicious, his car will be his own grave. Frank then takes the girl and hit the road. Johnson doesn't give him a specific location. He just wants the minister's daughter in constant movement until the minister signed the contract. On the way, the two had short conversations and got to know each other. The girl's name is Valentina, and she had been kidnapped like Frank. But Frank is not a sitting duck, he immediately deviated from the route and drove to a friend for help. The friend, a mechanic, recognizes Frank's bracelet and proceeds on research. At the same time, Johnson saw Frank deviating from his intended route and sent out his men. While the mechanic is looking for the bomb transmitter, Johnson's men arrive. After a few words, a fight breaks out. Frank, again, kicking their asses. Valentina is fascinated. She was attracted by Frank's masculinity. When Frank finishes the mobs and changes into new clothes, she goes up to fix Frank's tie. The technician finally found the signal transmitter, but the transmitter cannot be removed or it would explode. And the bracelet cannot be diffused either. Frank has to take Johnson's scheduled route. Johnson is also unhappy with Frank's deviation and orders to replace the driver. He arranges Frank to answer from public phone, and then sent the new driver to take over the car. Frank gets on a bike and rushes his life back to the vehicle. After an intense stunt, he successfully kicked the new driver out of his car. Then again, back to the minister. He could not sit idly while his daughter being kidnapped, he deploys agents to rescue her and postpones the contract signature. The agents first searched at Frank's house and obtained the GPS of the previous vehicle. They're gradually picking up the traces. Meanwhile, Turconi also discovered this case abnormal. He received a phone call from Frank. They exchanged information. Frank also called Johnson at the same time to deliberately acquiesce with him. In the course of the call, he kept Turconi tracking the signal. Trying to locate Johnson. But the call was not long enough to get his exact location. Frank had to continue to the new coordinate. While he is refueling, he finds the agents has found him. He immediately carries the drunken Valentina back to the car and speed away. During the escape, Frank questioned Johnson why he still sent his men after his ass. But Johnson clarifies that he didn't and he will find out who it is. During the chase, Frank tilts the car to squeeze through two blocking trucks. And drives into an side road. He suddenly slows down and lets the agent overpass him. And then accelerates to push the agent's car, jacking it off a cliff. By this point, he begins to wonder what the package in the trunk really is. After opening the package, it turned out to be just some ordinary books. He finally realizes that the real cargo is Valentina. After all of the life and death, they develop some sort of relationship. Valentina seduces Frank by holding his car keys, resulting in them having sex. Afterwards, 
Valentina explained that the previous driver broke the rules for her to contact her father. As a result, Johnson's henchman came after him before she could say a word. He was unfortunately shot and had no choice but to find Frank for help. Johnson calls to warn the minister, but the minister demands to hear from his daughter before signature. Johnson then sends Frank the new coordinate for pickup. The next day Draconi meets the minister and uses his call with Johnson to locate. On the other side, Frank has already arrived at the coordinate. The bridge is blocked. Johnson unlocks Valentina's bracelet but orders to kill Frank. Frank drives off the bridge and falls into the water. Johnson thinks he had everything settled. Because, in the water, swimming up to the surface will detonate the bomb, and staying in the car will drown Frank to death. But Frank survived by taking out a buoying device from the trunk. And used the tires to pump up the buoy, successfully bringing the car back to the surface. When Turconi and the police arrive, Frank and his car has already been towed ashore. On to his next move, Johnson takes Valentina to a train to avoid the police and has Valentina on the phone with her father. He gives the minister 15 minutes to sign the contract. Turconi informs Frank Johnson's whereabout. Frank immediately drives after the train. Successfully landed the car from the bridge to the top of the train. He chases Johnson all the way through the cabs, one henchman down after another, Frank is making good progress. But he is too close to the detonation range triggering the bracelet about to explode. One more step will end him in pieces. Johnson sees this opportunity and separate the cabs. Frank have to return to the car and hit the gas driving and crashing back into Johnson's cab. He gets off immediately, beating Johnson, unlocking the bracelet with his key, strapping him with the bracelet and sending his car into reverse. Johnson is still struggling and breaks free, but inevitably blown into pieces inside of the cab. At 9 o'clock, having not received a call from the police, the minister slowly signs the document. But at this very moment, the phone rings, upon hearing from Turconi that Valentina is safe, Tomalenko tears up the EcoCorp contracts. The illegal cargo ship is also raided by the police and sent away from Ukrainian shores. Later, Frank and Turconi return to fishing in Marseille. But unlike usual, Valentina is also on the boat, teasing them should eat at a restaurant instead. The Transporter trilogy ends here. There's still a non-canon Transporter movie remaining, called The Transporter Refueled. If you'd like to see it in the upcoming recaps, comment down below so that I shall make up my mind making it. If you do enjoy watching the video, don't forget to leave a like and consider to subscribe to the channel. I will see you guys in the next one. Abyssal signing out.